I'm just going to offer a, a few final reflections as we finish the conference. I think um, this has been, from my perspective, an incredibly successful few days. Uh, I think that um, we had at one point hoped we would return to a terrestrial meeting. I think it's, um, you know, very likely that next year we will be in person again, but I don't think we'll ever go back to not having a virtual option because this has been so successful. And to know that there have been attendees from across North America and as far away as Norway uh, really makes me hopeful that we can um, promote the science of cannabis as, as widely as possible. And I think that that's been the theme of the meeting, that um, there's a, a huge need for uh, more evidence um, the field in general has kind of tacked between periods of cannabis for nobody to cannabis for everybody. And really, the, the truth is that we typically need to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, cannabis is appropriate for some people some of the time. When it comes to medical cannabis, for certain conditions, it seems like the evidence is quite strong. But for others, it remains either inconsistent or quite weak. And when it comes to recreational use, uh, it seems like for adults, moderate levels consistent with the lower risk cannabis guidelines seem to be acceptable, but that doesn't mean that cannabis is for everyone by any means. Um, when it comes to evidence, we need more evidence in certain areas. I think that's been a theme in this meeting. And one of those areas is the need for more randomized controlled trials. Um, we need more up-down tests of whether or not medical cannabis confers meaningful benefit to patients for these many conditions and whether or not the benefits outweigh the harms. There are more than 400,000 uh, cannabis patients, probably more than a million medical cannabis patients in Canada when we think about those who are using without an authorization. There are millions of more medical cannabis patients around the world. And this evidence is critical to inform their care. Scientists are frustrated. You may have picked up on that from time to time in this meeting. One of our speakers actually commented that uh, the labors of cannabis research had taken 10 years off their natural life in their estimation, which I found a bit grim. But the reality is we're in these trenches also, and this is very hard work to do. It has um, pushed some of our trainees in different directions because it's so laborious. It has sidelined very productive investigators as their other work has gone forward. More important still though, clinicians are frustrated because they don't have the information that they need. Patients are frustrated because they have questions and they're not getting answers. We can do better and there's an urgent need to generate high quality evidence and fundamentally Clinical trials are the raw materials of good evidence. So what are the barriers? Well, one of the big challenges at present has been getting research licenses from Health Canada. And uh, to get on a soapbox for a second, there are many people in uh, the academic uh, world who are interested in doing trials. There are industry partners who are interested in supporting trials. There are patients and clinicians who recognize the need for trials, and we are finding ourselves in a bottleneck around getting permission to move forward. This has to do with the kinds of standards that are in place for clinical trials and certain animal model data that have to be in place. Um, but this is a huge problem. It's, it's significant enough that we organized an open letter to Health Canada that was signed by more than 200 scientists and clinicians nationwide asking them to revisit their regulations. And quite simply, there has to be a path for us to be able to evaluate whether the, the many products that are Health Canada approved for people to buy and consume, whether they work for their medical conditions. So we very much hope that Health Canada will respond to our open letter and will engage with the scientific community to try to resolve this impasse. We hope that there are gonna be better days ahead in which this meeting will be a platform for reporting the outcomes for some of these critical trials when it comes to post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorders, substance use disorders, chronic pain, uh, and other conditions, uh, you know, sleep uh, disorders, just to name one more. I think that, that that's the, the forecast for the future. It's a hopeful one. I hope that you join us next year. I'm very, very grateful to our program advisory committee uh, that was co-chaired by Dr. Zacharias and uh, Drs. Jennifer Brash, 
Jason Bussa, Lean Najee, Marissa Slavin, and Michael Van Amerigan. I'm very grateful to uh, Jason Bussa and Alan Fine for uh, their close collaboration with me and support for this meeting, which I think has been tremendously successful. Uh, thank you so much for all, all for attending, and I hope you have a great afternoon. Take care.